I'm Jess Adams. I'm a scientist at Imperial and I work on developing the next generation of solar cells. People spend a lot of time drilling for oil and shoveling coal. We use nuclear, gas, coal and oil for producing electricity. All of these have an effect on the environment and the atmosphere too. <coughs> these sources of energy are also running out, but there are alternatives. A gigantic renewable power station in the sky, the sun. Eight minutes and 18 seconds after leaving the sun, sunlight arrives on Earth and we can use it for generating electricity. Solar cells are called photovoltaic cells. I'm here in Hawaii for the big photovoltaic conference of the year. Hawaii's been spectacular. It's got volcanoes, rainforests, beaches, coast. There's absolutely loads you can do for adventure junkies. We're having an absolutely fantastic time. When I started my PhD, green energy really appealed to me. I am a vegetarian. Saving the world was definitely something I had in mind. Let's go into the exhibition hall. This is where all the industrial exhibitors have their stands. Travel is really a big part of being a scientist. Collaboration is a big part of being a scientist. There's a lot you can do over the phone and over email, but the best thing of all is to be face to face in a room with someone. We're trying to do a new top cell. And as a PhD student, it is so important to get your name in, to get your face out there, and especially if you're, you're able to manage to get a talk at these conferences. Because Jess did A-level physics and went on to do a degree, and then a PhD in solar research, she gets to go here, where she'll talk about her research to a thousand people at the conference. I was nervous the day before, but when it got to the morning, I felt absolutely fine and it just, it went really well. Thank you for the introduction, Ryan, and thanks very much for having me here to speak today. I'd like to thank all my co-authors and colleagues at Imperial College London first, also from the University of Sheffield in the UK and from the US Naval Research Laboratory where I did a lot of the measurements I'm going to speak about. I'll start off with an introduction to the Quantum Well Solar Cell. My speech was very, very important. Thank you. It went really well. I feel like I nailed it. Yeah, a lot of people came up and said, nice talk. That was absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Wow. Well done. I got a fair few people, you know, saying if you're interested in working for this company or that company, you know, drop me an email. And Where would I like to be this time in the year? Um, I would like to be abroad. I don't want to live in Britain anymore because the weather's horrible. I'm Robert Walters, conference chairperson. Uh, career chances are absolutely phenomenal. If you specifically talk about females in the sciences, there's still more male scientists than there are females. And so as a young female going into the sciences, there's definitely a very positive place to be and the job opportunities are abundant. And they're all over the world. Because solar panels are portable, they can be used almost anywhere in the world. As long as the sun is shining, solar doesn't produce as much power when it's cloudy. But in places with sunny climates, solar cells are often the best option. When a lot of people think about solar, they think of it in context of it being really helpful in the fight against climate change. But there is another really important application for solar. It can really help in villages in, for example, India and sub-Saharan Africa. Solar can be great because it can be absolutely standalone. You can go and install a solar module out in the village. For example, if you can give the village enough power to charge up torch batteries so that they have light in the evening, this can extend people's working hours. Being able to be more productive in the evening can have an absolutely massive impact in fields like education. It can really make a big difference in people's lives. I'm here with Rahul and Albin, who are both from my research group. My name is Rahul Bose. I'm a PhD student at Imperial College London, working in solar energy. Light is re-emitted typically isotropically. I'm really happy to have studied physics. With physics you get a really broad, nice education and you really do understand a lot of stuff, at least you can get your hand, head around 
a lot of things. The only reason that I'm sitting here on the beach in Hawaii now is because I chose to do physics. <laughs>